Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm sharing some super easy and budget-friendly Christmas DIYs using Dollar Tree's gift bags. So let's jump right into it. Dollar Tree has an amazing selection of Christmas gift bags, all with beautiful designs and classic prints. There's so many options for crafting with these. For the first project, I'll be using this large 18 by 13 inch gift bag. It has such a gorgeous design with the red cardinals and the poinsettias. I love the dark green background as well. I'll be making a little window frame with some Dollar Tree frame and I thought these four 5 by 7 inch wooden frames were perfect. Now these aren't actual real wood but you can't really tell. I think they look pretty good and I love the shade of the wood so I'm not painting them. So I'm removing the backing board and the glass on all the frames. I'm placing the frames on top of the bag and adjusting them until I like the image and its position. I'm also propping up the bottom too slightly to avoid the crease in the bottom and I'm just getting the idea of how I want it to look in the frame. Before I cut the images, I'm going to glue the frame together with two on top and two on the bottom. I'm just shifting them around until they fit nicely together. Sometimes one side can be a little crooked or uneven, so I'm just adjusting the frames until I get a good fit. It's kind of like a puzzle. I'm using Tight Bond Multi-Surface Glue to stick the frames together because I wanted something strong, especially since I'll be putting the glass back in. And then I just clamp them until the glue dries. But unfortunately, I guess I didn't let it dry long enough because one section did end up coming apart on me. So I scraped off the dried glue and thankfully it came off pretty easily and I switched it to E6000. And you know what, that felt way better and it felt super sturdy once it dried. Next, I'm placing the frame on top of the image and marking the part I want to use for each frame. and then I just trim it to fit. I also use a backing board of the frame as a guide to see how much I need to trim off. All I have to do now is put it right in the frame. First, I carefully put the glass back and then I place the images down. And you just wanna make sure you're putting them in the right frame. And then the backing board. You can definitely remove the little stand on the backs of each one just to make it look a bit cleaner and I'll probably go back and do that. But this one is all done and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And the best part is that you can totally swap out the images depending on the season. For the next gift bag DIY, I'll be using this dark green joyful bag. I really like the simple design on this and I thought it would look perfect on wood. So I'll be using this 11 by five and a half inch wood from Dollar Tree and you can sand the wood so that you have a smooth surface. So I'm placing the wood on top. The full image is definitely not going to fit. So I just mark the area that I want on the wood and I do add a little extra to that because I do want a little overhang and then I cut it out. I'll be using matte Mod Podge to adhere the paper on the wood and I get these mini bottles at Dollar Tree and I'm just squeezing a good amount on the wood and I use a little sponge brush to spread that all over. I really want to make sure I got the whole top surface covered with a Mod Podge, especially on the edges. Once I have that fully covered, I'm going to let that dry completely. You can also use a heat tool to speed up drying time. Okay, once that has dried completely, I'm going to place the paper right on top of the wood. Then I'm going to take some parchment paper and rip off a piece large enough to fit the wood and then lay it over the top. And this will keep everything protected while we add heat. So I'm using my mini heat press, but you can totally use an iron too. And I have it set to a low heat and I'm gently going over the parchment paper, moving it around with light pressure. And the heat will reactivate the Mod Podge and bond the paper perfectly to the wood. And you get no bubbles and no wrinkles. I'm standing along the edge of the wood to get rid of any overhang from the paper. And this really helps clean up the edges and make the board look polished and neat. After that, I'm going back over the edges again and sanding a little bit more to let a bit of that wood show through. And this is going to add a nice little detail and border. I'm going to be applying some gold rub and buff along the sides and the edges, and I'm just using a small little sponge brush. You can also use your fingers or a soft cloth, and I'm applying the gold all over the sides. And this is such a pretty gold. I believe it's in the shade Gold Leaf. Now, if you want the gold to go on smoothly, you wanna just give the sides a little sanding. I'm also applying it to the areas of the wood along the edge of the paper where I sanded. And I'm taking a little of that gold and going just slightly over the paper, just a little bit. And I'm not being too straight or precise with it. And I like how that looks. 
You can go over the surface with another layer of Mod Podge just to seal everything in. You can add a hanger in the back or just lean it against the wall. And this one is done. For the next DIY, I'll be using a couple of these canvas gift sacks. They have numerous designs and I really like the way they look and so I grabbed the red snowflake and the green Christmas tree. They come in a pack of two, which is really nice, and I'll be using one of each and the other two for another project. I'll be turning these into some hanging signs with some wooden paint stir sticks. I'll be removing the drawstring on top because I won't need those. I'll be attaching the paint stick to the top and the bottom of the sack, so I just measure how much I need. Now they're not all equal in size. One sack was slightly wider than the other, so I wanna make sure to measure that accurately. But before cutting the wood, I'll be trimming off a bit of the top of the sack to make it lay flat. The top edge is a little bit thicker because it's folded. And now I do the final measurements. I make sure to go a bit wider for a little overhang. Then I trim it down using a miter box and saw for a clean cut. Next, I'll be staining the wood with some gel stain in Walnut by Deco Art. I'm using a small cloth to apply the stain, rubbing it in to get an even finish. I really wanted a darker, rich tone for this because it adds warmth and it just makes it look more polished and cozy. It's really a nice contrast against a light canvas fabric. If you prefer something lighter or softer, you can go with a golden oak stain or a gray wash, which would give it that weathered farmhouse look or you can paint them a solid color as well. Once the stain is on, I'll let it dry completely before attaching the paint sticks. I'm applying a line of hot glue along the back edge of the wood and carefully pressing it into place at the top of the fabric. Once that's secure, I do the same thing along the bottom edge of the canvas, making sure everything lines up nicely. Now I did give the fabric a quick ironing, which makes it look so much smoother and more polished. It's a small step, but it really makes a difference. And look how beautiful these are looking. The final step is to attach some jute string to the back. I'm gluing the opening on the back shut to close it off. I'm also tucking the string in, and this will give the back a nice finished look. In hindsight, I kind of wish I'd stain the back as well. So if you're going to try this, definitely consider doing that. I think it'll make the back look even better, even though it's not going to be seen. And this DIY is done. Let me know what you think. For my next project, I'm giving a Dollar Tree book a Christmas makeover. I'll be using this super cute gift bag with reindeers and doves. How adorable is this pattern? I'm definitely drawn to the dark green gift bags. But with that said, I did pick out a few other beautiful patterns, which I didn't get to because of time. And I just wanted to get this video out to you. But if you want to see a part two of these gift bag DIYs, let me know in the comments and I'll make it happen. Okay, so I'm cutting out the amount of paper that I need for the book. I'll be cutting it out so that I have two pieces, the front and the back of the gift bag, and then trimming out the sides, which I'll be using in a bit. Now I'm making sure that the height is tall enough so that I have a couple of extra inches at the top and bottom when the book is placed on top. And then just trimming off some of that creased bottom. Next, I'll be gluing the two rectangles together using school glue. I'm just running a line of glue along the back edge of one of the papers and attaching the other to it like so. The image doesn't match up perfectly, but that's totally fine because we'll be covering that up later. Now I place a book right on top, close to the center. I want that glued seam to be in the bottom of the book when turned over and not on the side. I'm also trimming off the thick part of the paper along the side to keep things neat. I did want the flaps to be a little longer when folded in, but you can also trim them down to the length you prefer. I'm creasing the paper on the top and the bottom using the book as a guide so I know how much to fold in and then I fold the two edges down. And then I just fold the flaps over the covers and I also crease it a bit. So this is the moment I realized I did not have the image exactly where I wanted to be before cutting. I literally cut out the reindeer's heads and you'll see it even more in a bit. I probably should have gone with less flap and more deer and dove in the center. Oh well. It's still a beautiful image and we're moving on. And finally, I'm sliding the book covers into the flaps, starting with the back cover. And that goes in beautifully. I'm just making sure to push that in as far as it can go. And I do the same thing with the front, carefully sliding the cover in. 
And thank goodness those flaps lined up perfectly. I'm going to add a little contrast by using the side of the gift bag with a different pattern and I'll be applying it along the side of the book and it'll wrap around a bit on the front and back for some extra detail and a nice pop of design. So I trim it to the exact height of the book. I really don't want to fold down any edges just so there's no bulges and it lays flat. There's a crease in the center which I'll fit towards the bottom edge of the side of the book. Now you can trim the paper to the length you want showing on the front and back of the book. And I'm actually going to let the back spill over a little bit longer. To attach it, I'm just using some school glue and working in sections, making sure I glue all the edges down so it doesn't lift. And that's it for this one. A simple and fun way to give any book a Christmas makeover. And the best part is that nothing is glued directly to the book, so you can easily switch it up and change it anytime. If you liked today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and make sure to click that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my new videos. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.